Zach, what uh, what can you tell us about Wisconsin? What have you learned about them? What kind of challenges do they present? Uh, so the biggest challenge I've been aware of is Ethan Happ. Um, I mean, he's supposed to be, you know, a candidate for Big Ten Player of the Year. Really great post player. Um, today, I spent a ton of time watching his film, and uh, I mean, he's just a solid, smart, great all-around player. And that's gonna be that's gonna be a really big focus for me and Tyreek defensively. And um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try to make him beat us. A lot of times, a lot of teams double him real quick. He's a great passer out of the post. Ends up with a lot of wide open threes for his teammates, and then he's still really productive. So. Um, defensively, we really need to lock in. We need to, to force him to take really tough contested shots, keep him off the glass because he's a great offensive rebounder too. Um, so for me and Tyreek and also just our entire team, defense is going to be a huge thing against Wisconsin. How do you defend him without fouling? So mainly we just got to stay on our feet, and that's kind of tough for me because I like, I like blocking shots, I like jumping, but um, – I told, I told the guys I wanted to watch uh, his worst game that he had last year to watch what they did. And really their big man, what he did is he just stayed on his feet, kept his hands straight up. He got a couple great deflections on Hap. And, um, and, and I mean, he's, Hap needs you to get up. He needs to get those angles. Really, and he's really, really good at that. But if you stay on your feet, I think, I think we're going to be pretty good at, at holding him down. How much have kind of the guys who, who were here last year and years before have they filled you in to to what this rivalry with Wisconsin is like? I mean, it's it's kind of become something special in, in recent years. Have you heard about this? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we've had the had the scouting report up on our wall for the past couple of days, and you know they're up there talking about what this guy did, what this guy did, um, talking about these past matchups over a couple of years. So, it I think it's really really good for us because you know they know that, that they're a good team, and you know they kind of fill us in on it, fill us in on like what we need to do. And um, I think the guys that have been here are really, really excited to have another crack at them. And um, it just it keeps our focus really good. Uh, Coach said after the first game that you, that you were frustrated because you had trouble finishing it around the rim sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then in the last game, you came um, off the bench in the second half and really gave the team a push. How would you assess your play through the first two games? Um, first game, I, I just give it pregame jitters. That's what I did in my head mentally just to get past it. You know, two of seven from the floor, two of six from free throw. I didn't finish my layups or my free throws. So I was just like, you know, next game mentality. I was still able to have a good impact. Um, and then I just focused, you know, finishing. When you're two feet in the paint, you know, dunk it or, or go up hard and finish it. So I think I did a really good job of um, kind of getting past that and just sticking with my game and, and finishing hard. Evansville ended up being a really close game down the stretch. And I think that for some people that, that might be like cause for concern, but I think for you guys it might serve to be kind of like a wake-up call. Is that kind of how you guys use that to, to kind of build a little bit of momentum off that? Yeah, uh, we looked at it. We, I mean, they're, they were a tough team, but we all knew that we should have played better. And, and it was definitely a wake-up call because, you know, we're going against Wisconsin. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a really, really good team. So... I think it was a good wake-up call. I think we're going to take it a lot more seriously. Um, and mainly just, I mean, it's, it's defense. It's all about defense. Coach says it all the time. Like, we, we don't have a problem scoring. Um, but defense is a huge key for us. It, it was a great wake-up call. And I think we're going to be taking it a lot more seriously. One thing that fans like to really focus in on is free throw <clears throat> shooting, especially when it's not going well. And mm -hmm. you guys are shooting 56% from the stripe at this point. What is kind of your weekly regimen? I know in uh, the past that the players had to shoot 100 free throws a week. Do you still do that? We do 100 free throws a day. A actually. day. That's, that's yeah. what I meant. Sorry. Yeah, so um, we're still doing that. Uh, Steele said it now. He's the pregame um, or the game day, 100 free throws. He's going to be down there looking at it, making sure you're going through the routine. And um, I think it's really just a, men a mentality thing, you know. And, and it's a tough thing to do in front of, especially for me, coming from like you know a 2,000 crowd to 10,000 crowd and just focusing in and hitting your free throws. But um, I think it's just a mentality thing. I, I, I definitely think we're going to be working on it a lot. Is it is it a uh, priority somewhere down the road to get you and Tyreek on the floor at the same time? I've I've had some discussions about it. I think we are going to look at that a lot more. Um, it's just kind of tough in practice to work on that because he and I play the same position. Who are, who are we going to play against? We don't have two more bigs to play against. Um, but every practice we have been working on that. We we'd always do a lineup with me and him in, 
And um, sometimes on our just our shooting workouts, it'll be me and him passing to each other within inside the post. Uh, I think that would be a really good lineup, but I also think we have a versatile team that can go five guards, one big and two bigs. So um, it's definitely on a game to game basis, it's on a matchup basis, but I think that would be a very effective lineup for sure. Uh, defensively, do you play behind Hap and, and let him catch it or <clears throat> if you're one up on him? Um, so I will generally, we, we always front the post a lot of times. I can sometimes three quarter a little bit more because I got more length. Um, for me personally, my, my goal is just to always stay and keep contact with him, not let him catch it deep. He's he's great at being patient even when he's at 15 feet. He, I mean, he goes perimeter post too, so he'll catch on the three-point line, take a couple dribbles, make a good spin move, and get right into the post. So um, I'm, I'm going to be trying to, you know, we got to not let me and Tyreek both got to not let him get a, a deep catch, but then we also just got to play good, solid defense when he does have it wherever he has it because he's a threat everywhere. Um, and and main point is just staying on our feet and forcing him to finish over top of us. And if he doesn't, get the rebound. Have the coaches shown you that video of Tyreek running him down up at Madison last year? No, Later I haven't seen that. Is that a good one? He runs him down and steals it and goes. It's like yeah. a video game. It goes <laughs> the other way. Yeah, but no, he's definitely he's definitely a key point for this game.